Mr. President, in line with your stated commitment to eradicate the criminal economy, and if you are genuine with that commitment, why did you not report the crime in Palapala to the relevant and appropriate law enforcement institution, like how all nation, how, how, like how all citizens are expected to report a crime? Secondly, what message does it send to the nation when the allegations of money laundering, kidnapping, torturing, all happening in the president's farm, and the president refuses to take the nation into his confidence. And secondly, the president refuses to account to parliament about what transpired. Thank you. I thank you, Honorable, uh, the, the Honorable the President. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I have said and admitted that uh, there was a theft at the farm, and I reported that to a general of the South African police, who later informed me that he's also reported it to another general of the South African police. That matter, obviously, is under processing within, with, within the police service. They are dealing with it. I deny that there was any form of money laundering. I have said, and, and I've said it more publicly, that it was proceeds of sale of game. I order, Kaloku, order. Order, honorable members, order. Order, honorable members, would you please listen? Proceed, Mr. President. I have been a cattle farmer and a game farmer for a number of years, a matter that I have disclosed in my disclosures here in Parliament, as well as to the Secretary of the Cabinet. And that is an activity that sometimes results in the sale of cattle, as well as the sale of uh, animals such as buffalo, sable, roan, and what have you, and that is a matter that takes place from time to time, and even recently, we've been able to conclude, my managers have concluded, a process where a parcel of buffalo was also sold. So that, in my view, is not money laundering. It is a process that goes on. As regards to accounting to parliament, I have said that I'm willing, prepared, and able to subject myself, subject myself to all manner of investigations, as well as inquiries, as well as processes that are unfolding here in Parliament. There is now a Section 81 process which, 89 rather, meant to say 89, process which I have clearly and openly said I will cooperate in, and I will cooperate to the fullest of my ability. This matter has been subjected to a number of investigations by a number of authorities. The other time I counted there were up to seven or eight authorities that are looking into this. And I have said very openly that I'm willing to subject myself to that process, and that process is now underway. And my accountability to Parliament will obviously fully culminate in the structure of the Section 89 Committee that you, as members of the National Assembly, have set up, and that is where my full cooperation will also be displayed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable President. The last supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable MGE Hendricks. Honorable Hendricks, 
Is he on the virtual platform? Will you please open for Honorable Hendricks if he is on the virtual platform? Okay, Honorable um, Hendricks uh, is not here. Uh, shall we then proceed to deal with question number 15? You'd like to ask a follow-up question? Yes? Mr. President, um, thank you very much to you for your response, and we certainly welcome the fact that you've broken the silence. <laughs> Mr. President, I would ask you a simple question. If you reported it to a police in the general, a general in the police force, why was no case number ever given, and why was no case open? Thank you. The Honourable the President. I, I reported it as one would report, and when you report to a, a police general, you expect that processes will unfold in the way that they should, and in the end, the police general will be able to answer that question. Thank you.